Okay, let's talk Tesla and fear, uncertainty, and doubt. So this is a question that I've been getting quite a bit in my comments and my videos. Whenever I talk about my time at Tesla, people are asking, oh my God, you were there during your time when you know the media was assaulting Tesla and Elon like crazy back in 2017 through basically 2019. And I made a note of it on my Excel spreadsheet where I keep all my video ideas. And then earlier today, Elon had a response to someone's tweet on Twitter. And he was talking about the time at Tesla from 2017 to 2019, how FUD was so crazy. And, you know, I'll throw the tweet up here for you guys to read. But I figured since people have been asking about my perspective and, you know, now that Elon has brought it up, it kind of catalyzed me to put this video together. I figured I'd sit down and give you a little bit of insight into what it was like inside Tesla during those three years, really. And so I'm sure as a lot of you already know, I joined Tesla back in July of 2017. I joined on the distribution side of the business, on the service side really just working on making the service distribution network as good as possible. But what was very interesting about that time frame is when I joined, it was really around the time where Tesla was spending a lot of time ramping Model 3. And before that ramp, uh, quite a bit of the media attention, sort of the perception of Elon and Tesla was quite positive. You know, people saw Elon as a, oh, look at this guy. He's so smart. He's creating all these great things for the world and, and the U.S. and creating really cool products and creating jobs and all these things. But there was a very peculiar and sudden shift almost during that time frame in 2017 where the media turned a lot more negative. And you can make a lot of arguments as to why that was. But from my perspective, I experienced it in a very, very unique way. So before Tesla, I was obviously a huge fan of, of the company. I had been following Tesla and Elon since 2012, 2013. And so come my first day and really those first few weeks when I got you know my Tesla badge with my face on it and my name on it and the Tesla logo, I was so proud. You know, I was so proud to be part of that mission in that company to the point where when I would go for lunch at you know our local Wegmans, which is basically a grocery store and they have this great buffet selection. Every time I should show up there with my Tesla gear and my Tesla badge, you know, oftentimes there was an interaction with someone that's like, oh my God, you work for Tesla? How cool is that? How, what is it like? Have you met Elon? You know, <laughs> do you get Tesla cars for free? You would have, you know, kids be like, oh my God, look, he works for Tesla. They're, they're such cool cars. So it was super, super positive. It really reinforced sort of my idea behind the mission and what the company stood for. But it started to take a weird turn for the worse, I guess, as time went on through 2017, 2018. So a lot of those interactions that were initially you know, super, super positive, they started turning more into like, oh, you work for Tesla. Oh man, I heard, you know, Elon is kind of crazy. Are you sure you still want to work there? I heard the company is losing a lot of money. They're going to go bankrupt. You know, are you sure you still want to work there? And the very weird thing, and this really happened towards the end of 2018, was that it wasn't just people around me that noticed the badge or the gear were making comments like that. Friends and family started making those comments, right? So I'm at Tesla working my ass off, you know, 12, 16 hour days, super, super intense work. And then I come home, you know, and I call my friend or my friend calls me. They're like, hey, are you sure you still want to work at Tesla? You know, you should probably sell your shares. Oh, there's all these news articles about how Tesla is going to fail and how Elon's losing his mind. And the weird thing is that that sort of mentality or commentary would also sometimes appear internally, especially amongst people that were new to the company or didn't really understand what the company was about or didn't have access to data or metrics that sort of told a separate story about what was actually going on at Tesla that would ask questions like, Oh my God, am I going to lose my job? I'm hearing these things about Elon and Tesla. I'm not sure if I want to work here anymore. And there was this weird time where we had to manage this. It was a subset of the staff. It wasn't everybody, but it was a subset where there was a lot of doubt. You know, that, that fear, uncertainty, and doubt did work in a way on a subset of the population, both internally and externally of Tesla, right? But I think ultimately what really, really ended up happening is that because Tesla and the people that worked there were able to overcome the insane barrage of negative news and negative sentiment by executing and becoming profitable, it taught so many people, including myself, so many insanely valuable lessons on how to navigate a tough time. And the great thing is that these lessons aren't just applied to the workplace, they can be applied to just life in general. And so what I like to do now is kind of go through what are those lessons that I learned going through that ridiculously weird 
like just confusing time while working at Tesla. And I wanna share those with you in hopes that maybe it will help you at your workplace, it will help you in life. Maybe there's something that you're going through that you could draw a parallel you know, with this experience that I went through and hopefully it's helpful. Or if you just wanna kinda of hear a, a story about what I've learned through that time, then this is the perfect video for you. The first lesson I learned was learning how to identify noise. So noise is anything that is emotionally charged, doesn't have a lot of factual data behind it. And the dead giveaway was when you had an article that had a ridiculously crazy headline. Those articles or those that commentary, if you clicked on it or listened to the detail, very rarely, if ever, did they have any sort of factual data-driven conclusions that will help them sort of make the point that the title is making. So that was one. I, I learned that lesson is that stop taking things at face value identify what noise is, and then if you find noise, just ignore it. It doesn't matter, who cares? Just let them say whatever they wanna say. If you know that the opposite is actually factually true, or you can tell that the article or the commentary or the whatever the person's saying is not really backed up by anything factual, just ignore it. You know, it's not, it shouldn't be part of your decision-making process. The second big one is learning how to stay logical through difficult times. And this is very hard for me personally, because I'm a, I tend to be somewhat emotional when it comes to things. I, I'm very passionate when I really believe in something or I'm very passionate when I don't, you know, when I'm against something or I feel like something shouldn't be the way that it is. But it, it was really a great lesson because staying logical forces you to really be objective, right? And really look at factual data and make data-driven decisions. While I worked at Tesla, I could very easily see that during the time when People were saying Tesla's not selling any cars or Tesla is, you know, going bankrupt and whatever. They're, they don't have any customers. The man is going down like crazy. I had access to data that said the opposite. Even through the service channel, I could see that there's more and more cars on the road and there's more and more parts we're shipping, right? These are direct data sets that help me sort of say, okay, so I know I have data that is opposite of what everyone else is saying. And so what I learned to do after that is, okay, anytime a narrative's going on, I need to see if I can find data that describes the opposite, right? And then using those two things, factual data on one side, factual data on the other side, take those two things together and learn from that and see if you can make a decision from that. But you can't do that unless you're logical in your approach, unless you're objective in your approach. And so that was one thing that I learned and I'm very, very happy that I learned that during that time. The third thing that I learned personally is that I learned how to lead in moments of doubt. And so what I mean by that is when you have a subset of a team or people that you're either responsible for or people that you work with quite often and they are afraid or they're, they have doubt or they're unsure about something, leading in those situations is very, very peculiar because you're spending a lot of time sitting down with people that have uh, an emotion or a thought that's really driving the way they're thinking, and then you have to sit down and deconstruct why that is. And so it really taught me to sit down with folks and really, really learn why they feel a certain way, either in a group setting or in a personal setting. And so that was an invaluable thing for me because it taught me that everyone approaches things differently. Everybody perceives things differently. You can't just cast a wide net on everybody and assume that, oh, these people are thinking this way because, you know, they've been brainwashed or whatever. No, there's some very specific things as to why people land to a certain specific conclusion. And so sitting down with those folks and really learning why they're thinking that way and then presenting information that is counter to that that is more factual, that is more relevant to what they're saying. It was so, so important for me to learn because it really helped me connect with these folks and build trust, build trust between myself and the folks that I'm talking with and really help them understand that, hey, just because you're hearing something that's going on doesn't mean it's actually going on. There may be things going on that are opposite and so you have to encourage those folks that have that fear and doubt to really spend time to understand that. And so that was very, very invaluable for me. And of course, the other soft skills that I learned is, you know, getting in front of a crowd of, you know, 30, 40 people that are afraid of losing their jobs or afraid of something bad happening to the company and, you know, using data that says, hey, this is, this is what we see. This is what Elon's saying. This is what our coworkers are saying, our bosses are saying. Look at the work you're doing on a daily basis. Are you shipping more lines day to day? Yes. Are you doing more work day to day? Yes. Are we hiring more people day to day? Yes. So these are things that helped the teams really understand what was going on. And being in front of that group and really conveying that message was one of the, probably one of the hardest things I've had to do in my career, but also one of the most valuable because guess what? We overcame.
we overcame. Look at where Tesla is today. So having been part of that experience has been great. And it's something that I would encourage really people that if, if you're in a situation where you can lead in those in those moments of doubt or fear, and, and you're sort of afraid to get in front of it, but you know you have the right message and you know you have the right data, get in front of those people. Because having somebody there that's a voice of reason is incredibly valuable and super, super rare, especially in those moments. So I highly, highly encourage you to undertake that if you feel like you have what it takes to really get in front of a group. The next one that I learned, and this one might be a little controversial, but it's something that has really applied to me because I was so close to that company while this was going on, is that there seems to be a trend, especially in mass media, where facts really don't drive the discussion. It's how quickly or how many people you can get to click on your article. And usually what happens with these articles is the more emotionally charged they are, or they have some sort of talking point that seems to get them clicks, those are the things that really drive the discussion. And it doesn't seem like these sites or companies are really incentivized to really share the full context or share the actual things that are going on or do their research to validate that these things are actually happening. And so it really taught me to be much more objective and to really, unfortunately, unfortunately, to not trust the headline is to really go into the article, try to find counterpoints or try to find data that supports or disproves the thing that's being said and then use all that information to make a decision or use that information to form an opinion, especially in this day and age. And, you know, YouTube, like I'm a, I'm a YouTuber now when I'm crafting the freaking title and thumbnail, I try so hard not to be like those folks, but I get where they're coming from. I get where they're coming from, but it's an unfortunate reality is that it seems like if, if you get lazy when it comes to that and you're not really, really investing a lot of time really doing the context research and really understanding what you're talking about. You know, if people click on it, who cares? You're getting paid. You're making the company money. I respect everyone's opinion regarding that topic, but I did want to share that personally because it was something that I learned. It was something that I learned that I believe is true and I wanted to share it with you. And lastly, the major thing that I took away is that if you really believe in something, if you really have everything, all the data, all the evidence, the passion, everything towards a specific mission or goal that you want to do, even in the face of family and friends and everybody's telling you, no, don't do this. You're, you're making a mistake. This is, this is a bad idea. If you believe in it hard enough and you are really, really trusting of what you're working on, stick to it. It's yours. There's so much learning you can gain from both the success and failure of really sticking to your guns and really, really following your passions. And fortunately for me, in this situation, it turned out to be great. You know, it turned out that Tesla grew to be a trillion dollar company. And because I was a former employee, quite a bit of my compensation was in stock. And so it changed my life. It completely changed my life. It allowed me to do this, to get in front of a camera and a freaking microphone and talk to you all, right? But it really taught me the value of just sticking to what you believe in and trying your absolute hardest to make that dream or passion or mission happen. Whatever you can do to make it happen, put your all in there because there's a chance that it might work and if it works, it could be maybe a little bit better, but it also could be insanely better. And so for me, that was a lesson that I learned. And whenever I feel like I really want to get into something or I'm really passionate about something, I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to stop, right? Whereas before Tesla, there may have been things, if things get too hard or there's too many people saying, don't do this, maybe I could have been swayed. There's definitely a possibility I could have been swayed. But now it just gave me so much confidence in what I believe in and so much confidence in what I'm passionate about. And I'm so grateful for the time that I spent at that company, especially during that time. There's so many things that I learned and these five are the ones that really stick out to me, but there's so many others. I could make an entire freaking live stream about this if I really wanted to, but there's just so many things to take away from that. And so the way to summarize this video, if you're in a moment or in a situation where everything seems dire or there's a lot of people telling you that, you know, it's not going to work but you know you have the data, you know you have the evidence that the opposite is true, never quit, never quit. Be a leader, be somebody that brings the information to light, be that person that increases confidence and builds confidence in the teams. There's so many people that would benefit from that, especially if you have the data, especially if you have the data that tells the opposite story. And fortunately for me, that experience changed my life. And I know it changed other people's lives as well while they were at that company. And really the huge takeaway for me as well is that now Tesla has this powerhouse group of people 
that have gone through a very, very weird time at Tesla where they were being told time and time again that they're not going to be able to be successful. And yet what ended up happening is that they became successful multiple times over. And so imagine the confidence that staff has now in that mission, in the work that they're doing. That is so exciting for the future of the company. And ultimately, it's exciting for those folks as well because I'm sure they've learned so many lessons and I can't wait to see what they're gonna build in the future. If you like this video, I love it if you throw me a like. If you wanna see more stuff from me, feel free to subscribe. If you wanna become a patron, I have a link to my Patreon below. If you'd like to join the channel, I have a button right below this video that says join. And then I also have a podcast series on this channel that you can also find on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or your favorite podcast app. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.